tape into it and they'd record it and I'd have a separate <laughs> reel for the burps because you never know who's going to burp. So I think that was really nice of me to just swallow my burp right there. If I have to burp again though, I'll go ahead and burp, burp in the mic for you. <laughs> um, let me see. Oh, if I wasn't doing it, what would I do? Um, so the music and the coaching and I don't know, I always thought it'd be fun to work at Wet Seal or Forever 21. <laughs> Selling clothes again. Um, I think anything is really fun, but I love doing voiceover. Mostly I like having people clap for me. <laughs> I did good. Um, what do you do? Oh, uh, I just graduated, so not much of anything currently. <laughs> Congratulations! From college? Uh, mm -hmm. For you. And now you have to just find a job, live at home, and yep. pay off loans. <laughs> That was a lot cheaper when I went to school. I was paid off before the last class ended, but it's not like that anymore, is it? No, it's really expensive. Um, I had something else to say, but I'll think of it. Okay, another question from somebody? Yes, Mario or Luigi, one of the two. How is it like working in the game? That, again, was one of the funnest. Is that even a word? Not really. It was the most, one of the most fun sessions I've ever done because one, Ginny McSwain directed it, and um, two, I got to work with Rob Paulson, who, I don't know if you know who he is, he does pretty much every cartoon out there, and uh, he's brilliant, and we had so much fun working with each other, him is Carl, and he's Jimmy, <laughs> and Nickelodeon's a fun place to work because Friday they have donuts, and they always give us lunch, <laughs> and um, we have great engineers, uh, so Jimmy Neutron was super fun. Plus, the scripts are amazing. They have some of the best writers for all the Neutron, I mean, all the, the Nick shows. Um, was the second question asked again? I was going to say, what was your favorite uh, other actor the sporting character? Well, it, it's going to have to be Carl, because he was so different than Jimmy, and I think the contrast is where the humor was. Plus, in, in, when Rob Paulson invests himself in a character, he really gives his full attention to it. And he just created such a silly person with Carl and his love of llamas and his <laughs> fear of asthma uh, and his fear of diseases. In fact, I was at the bank the other day. and The voiceover community in Los Angeles is very small. And I looked at the teller window next to me <clears throat> And there was Mark DiCarlo. He did the voice of Hugh Neutron. So we hadn't seen each other in quite a while, but when you're doing a show where you're with these actors eight hours a day, twice a week for months, you become very close. So I just like, Mark? Very, very? And actually I said DiCarlo. He said very, very. That was fun to get to see him. Um, very small community. I live right around the corner from Tara Strong, my boys play with her boys, my best friends E.G. Daly, we, we're all just, just short, funny, talking chicks. <laughs> <laughs> um, was that both your questions? Yeah. Ask more because nobody's raising their hand and I'm going to have to talk about Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> what do I think of Jim Cummings? Personally, I love him just about more than anybody in the world. He's extremely talented and he can do so many different voices. I mean, when you hear him do the Tasmanian Devil, and then one second later he can do Winnie the Pooh, and then one second later he can do, you know, some Eeyore, he's such a chameleon. And then we'll go to a party and he'll have a beer and all of a sudden he'll be singing the crazy blues songs. He was raised in Chicago or the suburbs, and uh, he was raised in a really rough area of town. So when you meet Winnie the Pooh, and he's so mild-mannered and sweet and darling, you also can feel very safe around this man, because should there arise a situation where you needed someone to protect you, he can be very, very mean and bad and protective. Of course, he has like seven daughters, so he has to be. Oh my God. 
love Jim Cummings. Such a great guy. In fact, I was on my way to Comic Con San Diego, and I was thinking about him, so I called him on the cell, and he was like, yeah, I'm just ready going into the movies with my girls. But I wanted to say hi to him, because I remember when we had done Mark Hamill's movie, uh, comic book the movie, we all took a big van down to San Diego, me and Jim Cummings and Jess Harnell and Rob Paulson and Mark Hamill and the whole lot. And um, so every time I drive to San Diego to Comic-Con, I think of these buddies fondly. Kate Moore. Yes. <laughs> I think in any business there are probably a couple of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, there's a couple that run real hot and cold with me. Just two. And of course I'm not going to mention names, but when I work with them, it's professional and uh, we do what we do. We just probably don't call each other and ask us out, out to the movies or anything like that. But um, I noticed by and large that a lot of voice actors, most of them in animation, are high strung, crazy, love to hear themselves talk, <laughs> um, high energy, kind of insane, and uh, love lots of attention. And I suppose a room full of those kind of people is hard. It's nice if I'm the only one of me. <laughs> so, yeah, but by and large, just a bunch of fabulous people. And when they're nice to me, I'm nice to them. But there are those two that just run hot and cold. <laughs> yes? Did you have? Yes, in the front. Um, have you ever had that moment where you ran into another, you got to work with another voice actor that you always looked up to and you're like, I can't believe I'm working with this person? That kind of happened to me with Carol Channing. Um, do you know who she is? Mm -hmm. Very uh, senior lady of the original Hello Dolly. Uh, I think she's still with us. But yeah. that's the kind of icon. And one day when we were recording, uh, I believe it was an Adams family at Hanna-Barbera back in that day. They came into the booth and they said, Jonathan Winters is in Gordon Hunt's office. And so we stopped recording and we were all just kind of gaga going, oh my god, it's Jonathan Winters. And so we walked down to Gordon's office and there was Jonathan sitting at the desk and I thought it was going to be like me talking to you, like, how are you? Wow, it's good to meet you. The man was insane. <laughs> I don't. I don't think he ever heard anybody speak, but himself. I, I've never met anyone like him. He should have been institutionalized. <laughs> he was brilliant and hilarious and funny and in his own special, special place in the world. And then there was another time that we were recording Jimmy, Jimmy Neutron. It was, I think, a Christmas episode. And Mel Brooks was in the studio. And they told us ahead of time he was going to be there. And they also told us no autographs. <laughs> because we go gaga, too. I mean, I get to work with famous people. One time Christian Slater came in. And I, I was very excited to meet him. But yeah, Mel Brooks, that was a biggie. And I did bring in record album, and he did sign it. <laughs> oh, oh, and one time at the UCLA Book Festival I was hosting, I got to introduce dum, 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 Julie Andrews. Ooh. I got to introduce Julie Andrews. It was really amazing. And I got to introduce Brooke Shields. And oh. I stood up next to her, and she stood up next to me. <laughs> <laughs> and my face was right next to her boobs. And we took a picture, and she's very tall. And she was very nice. But yeah, I get starstruck, and I do get to work with famous people. I think I'd fall to the floor and faint if I ever got to work with Dolly Parton or James Taylor. I would, I would just be out like a light on the floor. <laughs> Can you lift up your mouth? Uh, speaking of country music, um, 
Have you ever, or do you ever want to play at the Grand Ole Opry? And what was your weirdest gig while you were in Nashville? Let's see, I really did want to sing at the Grand Ole Opry, and so I had a friend who actually took me backstage one night, um, and I got to watch the show from backstage at the Opry. And I, it was one of those nights where you're just in a fog because it's so amazing that you actually get to be there. And then I went home and wrote a song about getting to sing at the Grand Old Opry. But I put three syllables in it. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose it's like that with any starstruck moment when I'm somewhere I can't really believe I'm there. Like the day I pulled up to the Jimmy Neutron premiere at Paramount Studios in the limo, dressed up with my mom and my dad next to me. They picked me up and took me there. And there was a red carpet and the giant Jimmy Neutron blow up things and such a hullabaloo. I mean, it was a big deal. And I was ready to get out of the limo and my phone rang. And you guys are the only one I've ever told this to. <laughs> and I picked up my phone and it was the publicist from Paramount. And he said, hey, Deb, um, listen. They don't want you to walk the red carpet. They don't really want anyone to know it's you. <laughs> so it took me off guard, and I think they waited till the last minute so my agent wouldn't raise hell with them. And I didn't get to walk the red carpet for the Jimmy Neutron Paramount premiere. Mm -hmm. And they were very tricky. Those bastards! <laughs> <laughs> And then at the Paramount Oscar party, when we were nominated, I was sitting uh, at my table with my friend, and he looks behind me, and, he's, and we knew Vanilla Sky was nominated, and Paul McCartney had written a song for Vanilla Sky. And he says, wouldn't it be funny if Paul McCartney came? And I'm like, yeah, right. He says, Paul McCartney just walked in behind you. I said, he did not, you big stupid. And I turned around, I swear to God, Paul McCartney was standing right behind me. And I, I don't know what came over me. I jumped up and I said, hi, I'm Debbie and I do the voice of Jimmy Neutron. And I'm the other uh, um, thing that was nominated for an Oscar. Can we have a picture? And he was with the one-legged lady. And so <laughs> I jumped up and we got a picture together. And I don't think we were really allowed to have a picture with Paul McCartney, but I got one. And that was one of those life time moments that you never forget that I got to breathe the same air as Paul McCartney in the same room and the paparazzi outside there were hundreds of them waiting out there to get his picture that was pretty great <laughs> thanks for listening <laughs> anybody else George isn't that your name Robin Williams? Williams? I haven't worked with Robin, but my best friend E.G. Daly did on um, to those mumbles in, what do you call that movie? Uh, yeah, Happy Feet. And uh, she said that he was lovely. I mean, in addition to being one of those insane kind of Jonathan Winter people, he does have sane moments, but he <laughs> is so talented. One of those on-camera actors who actually can make the transition to voiceover. A lot of on-camera actors want to do voice work, but there's a, there's a thing that happens when you get in front of the microphone and you kind of freeze up, or it sounds like you're reading, or you think the microphone has a camera in it and you can pause and make a face and it'll make a difference. <laughs> so there's a whole timing thing. Because in voiceover, it's got to all come out of your mouth. You can't say, you are kidding me. You did what? You have to say that. You can't go, oh, you are kidding me. You did what? Because the camera doesn't see your face. And then those big pauses mean you get fired. And that's what a lot of on-camera actors do. Did I tell you I worked with Christian Slater? Yeah. You mentioned it. <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, so you worked on um, Jimmy Neutron, you worked on Zatch Bell, and um, I was wondering which one was like easier to do because Zatch Bell you sort of already had a finished product that like um that you could draw some sort of inspiration from, 
but the other one wasn't quite finished. I gotta tell you, oh, did it just make Neutron was so much more fun and so much easier than Zatch Bell. When you do anime, you're married to the beeps, you're married to the flaps, the there's so many mouth flaps. They say, okay, Zatch is talking, you have five seconds, you have six mouth flaps, and this is what you have to say. So it's very technical, and it's very uh, focused, and it's harder because you have to get that emotion into that block of mouth flaps. And sometimes you have to rewrite it right there on the spot. Of course, I wouldn't. I mean, the director, Jeff Nimoy, would rewrite it. And um, you don't really have the freedom in anime to create to, like in Jimmy Neutron, if he says anything, I'll have pre-life and giggles. Like if the line is, okay, mom, I'm coming, got a blast. I wouldn't just say, okay, mom, I'm coming, got a blast, because that's how many lip flaps there were. I could go, ha, okay, mom, uh, I'm coming. Wait, wait, uh, got a blast. There's a <laughs> lot of space in there and a lot of freedom. And I think as an actor, that's what I enjoyed a lot more. Anime is, is really very technical. It's like putting together an iPhone after it's taken apart. You just have to really focus and do it. And getting the acting in on top of it, that's, it's hard. And it's also hard because you don't need to know this, but it doesn't pay its thing. <laughs> okay, next. What would you recommend to someone who wants to get started? Well, hopefully first, I would say you study acting because that's what it is. It's not just doing voices, it's voice acting. And um, I do have a lot of students and you should probably be a good reader. Make sure that, I mean, sometimes reading is, for me, it comes second nature and I take it for granted. And I see other people who might have a little more trouble getting the words off the page. And it is a skill. So I would say do a lot of studying with other people. There's some great books out there. I know Dee Baker Bradley has a wonderful site, something called I Want to Be a Voice Actor. And there's a lot of tips and cues in there and clues. And, and after you get good at the voice work, then there's the business. As in anything, if you wanted to become a good real estate agent, you can pass all the exams you want you got to do your cold calls, meet people, make connections. Um, I'm guessing you want to be a voice actor? I think it'd be really fun. It is super fun <laughs> and super competitive. Nowadays, there's so many ways of making a living with your voice. It doesn't have to be animation. It can be a commercial, promo, trailers narratives, audiobooks. There's just so many different facets of voiceover and so many of them that you can do online because a lot of them don't go through the union. Voice123, VO Planet. Um, you, I get auditions all day every day from these agencies and I pick and choose and do my auditions from home. So it's very technical and I think for younger people <coughs> <laughs> it's a lot easier to uh, do your auditions and to get used to the business online. For actors who are seniors in the business, veterans who aren't necessarily so technologically savvy, they might get a little frightened by saying you plug your mic into the USB on the iPad and then you download the app to record and then you turn it into an MP3 and send it to your agent. That sounds a little foreboding, a little scary to some people. It's not, but it's, you know, when you get any new electronic device, when you get a new phone or a, a new anything, you look at the manual and go, shit, I have to learn how to do it. <laughs> at least that's what I do. You guys probably just get it and figure it out and know how to do it. But it's tough. So there's a lot to being a successful actor or voice actor. Even on camera, most of the auditions now are done via your video camera or your iPhone and you send your auditions electronically now. So there's a lot less driving. But you do have to have your acting as good as you can get it. 
and there is a lot of places you can go to get acting training. I do uh, animation and commercial workshops all the time. I'm doing one in Atlanta next month. I was in New York last month. I think they have them all over. Um, there's got to be something in Florida. Are you from Florida? There's got to be something down here. Anybody else? I actually asked you questions you just the last time. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I asked earlier, I think, because you went on a really big rabbit trail, and I think you forgot. I asked you your weirdest gig was in Nashville. Oh, my weirdest gig in Nashville. Okay, let me think for a second. I was the Kroger Christmas elf <laughs> <laughs> on camera. Yeah, I wanted to be like a grown up and sing, and the only jobs I got were elves singing like a kid and standing in for boys and uh, I was standing in for some kids on some of those films uh, Hey Vern it's Ern or the Jim Barney films Ernest Goes to Camp, Ernest Saves Christmas remember those movies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. anyway they had little boys in them my agent said do you want to just stand in for the boys and I'm what is standing in? Well, that's when you get paid 50 bucks a day to sit on the set, and when they want to set lights, you go stand there, and your body's the same size as the little boy's body, oh my and gosh. the same color, so the boys don't have to do their own... They don't have to stand in when they're setting lights and booms and stuff. And I thought, okay, I'm not proud, I'll do that. One of the women there, one of the moms, said, hey, you have a really interesting voice, would you like to do voiceover? And that's when I said, what's that? And uh, she gave me these casting director names and I sent my tape. So if I hadn't done this stand-in work in the forest for Jim Barney, I wouldn't have met this woman who gave me these great names. Um, I guess that's the most interesting of the jobs in Nashville. The rest were just, you know, getting any gigs I could to sing any country songs I could. But they just wanted me to talk like a baby. <laughs> okay, Mimi. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> so, when you're given, um, when you're cast as, you know, the character who, you know, you're giving the voice of this character the first time, how do you go about figuring out that character's voice and what they sound like? <clears throat> Good question. Um, they'll send a spec sheet along with the script. Usually the script is just an excerpt of specific lines of this character sounding in many different emotions. Happy, sad, frustrated, angry, quiet, shy. And then they'll send you a picture, and that picture will kind of help you hone in on the character. Like, um, if they tell you the it's a teenage girl, I know I used this example before, but like, um, if it's a teenage girl and she's like, well, I, I can't wait to go to school with my friends tomorrow. And then you realize, oh, she, they want a Midwest on it. Oh, I can't wait to go to school with my friends tomorrow. So you'll put a little twang on her there. Or maybe then you'll look at her picture and there's braces on her. So you can layer it and say, oh, I can't wait to go to school with my friends tomorrow. <laughs> and you have all these layers that make up the character. Or maybe you want to do something that not everybody's going to do. And so you can do something completely opposite. So maybe that's what she should sound like. And maybe you'll do her really slow and stupid. And that might be different than what everybody else is doing. So you kind of have to have a tape two in your back pocket. It's really a crapshoot. It's <laughs> a miss. You kind of figure, what's everybody going to do? And how can I make mine different? It's just an acting choice that you make, which is something you learn in your acting classes, is to make a choice and commit to your choice. Like, it's, it's not funny if you're not committed to it. And I, if, you're, if you have done acting, you'll understand what I mean. It's, if you're really invested in it, and the audience can really believe what you're doing, and what you're saying, and how intent you are on it, then it gives them the freedom to enjoy your character more. So, there you go. Now, Mimi, she had a bath last week and I painted her, pink, her toenails pink. And
and um, they were very pretty. Yes, Luigi. 